Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the Rizu Forest. So let's go there. Take that back over. I'm gonna want to do the decorative work on the road. Again, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use for the road. If anybody finds any mods that allow me to choose from a much wider selection of painting options, please let me know. At present, I have not heard of any, and from what I can see with the alterations that you've got to make to the files in any map, it's actually quite a difficult thing to... Well, it's, it's hard enough to add in some extra painting options just on a map. Um... For, well, for someone like me, I can edit basic XML stuff. Um, but anything beyond that is getting pretty tricky for me. I don't really understand it. There's little bits of code and stuff that you've got to change. Um, so, for me, it's not really an option to go along and just edit in some extra bits. Whereas for other people, it's something that you find quite simple and it's, it's, it's no issue at all. But what I'm really hoping is that someone is eventually able to make a mod that will allow us to add all of the different paint options on any map. But I don't go and by the way that the base game does that, not sure how well that would work. Whether it would even be possible. Right, because of how the code works, I'm not sure that such a thing would be possible at all. Right, how are we going to do this? I guess this bit here would be part of our farm. We'd, we'd kind of want to expand our tree line. Well, our, our field line. We'd, we'd want to bring it out over here. So these trees here are ones that we want to get rid of. There'd be no real reason to keep these trees right here. So the, these ones would go, which means that we'll start getting rid of them now, chopping them down, and then we can bring a trailer back up here and we can chop them all up and move them out of the way. While we're doing wood felling, we will keep the time ticking on 60 times speed so that we're not doing loads of it and time is progressing. And while we're doing... Uh, decorative landscaping work that sort of thing we will put the time on to 120 times speed so that we're not spending absolutely ages doing that either you just get little stints of it because um, I'm sort of trying to balance things out with what people have said on different parts of it this way time does go by we, we get to advance things because at the moment I've been doing lots of forestry I've been doing quite a lot of building and just moving stuff around with our different um, factories and, and stuff like that and I've been making silage and I haven't really done anything else so let's just shut you down and we will skip the night a moment right the other thing that seems to flicker is when you have frost on the ground. If it's snow, it doesn't seem to flicker. Whoa. Just look at this. That Like, there's, there's a seizure-inducing mess. In order to avoid the seizure-inducing mess, I've just fast-forwarded another month so that it's warmed up slightly. And we don't have the white all over the ground. The deciduous trees no longer have the brown leaves on them they've got the pale green leaves and that actually seems to work all right so I was sort of just looking up this way for the trees yeah that's all fine now and now we're okay until about october when we start to get the whole flickering thing going on so i will try playing around with settings um maybe shadows can get rid of this but i've seen other reports of the same issue so i'm not thinking that there's a major issue with my computer. I'm thinking that there's it's just you know, one of those things that I'm going to have to like try and tweak here and there. Possibly because I'm actually recording, that can have an effect. That could have triggered something unusual going on in the background. It does from time to time. It could just be exclusive to me. 
I could just be very special like that, and that does also happen from time to time as well, which is slightly frustrating. Uh, let's go and have a look and see how we're doing in here. So we're still distributing everything. I've got plenty of wood in there. That's all fine. Material missing in there. We're going to have some more soon, so it's going to be fine. 16,000 litres of planks. 16. 10,000. 10,000. 16. It does actually look like the sawmill is going to outproduce five furniture factories which is slightly ludicrous i'm quite happy for it to do that don't get me wrong i am more than happy for it to do that so i'm in march at the moment uh june july is the time that we want to be selling furniture so let's jump into you i'll start cutting down a few more trees just in here which means i want to go to that one off on Start it up, and we will go and start taking down a few of these. What I reckon I will do is, if I take down a few of these trees, then we will aim to enlarge this field after we've done our next cut. So I'm going to want to have a lorry up here with a trailer and we can load up these logs and move them even if we don't take them all the way to the sawmill I mean I probably will want to take them all the way to the sawmill it seems like a sensible thing to do and I will I will continue to cut these by hand for now until such time as I get a little bit of feedback on whether or not you think that I should be doing all of the, well, I say by hand, by machine, um, whether or not you think that I should be doing this for all of the, the fields and so on as we expand, or if we should just chop them out of the way, because originally I said that I wasn't going to do this, but from a few comments that I've received and that, and from what a few people have been saying, um, it seems that you actually don't mind having little bits of this it depends how i do it now i'm sort of i was going back to the hardcore series and whilst i did enjoy doing the hardcore series in boulder canyon with uh cutting up all the, the trees and like cutting it all out it did ultimately end up getting a little bit too much but that was because everything was on hardcore settings like i was i forced into a particular route of playing and so we had to just keep doing timber all the time for very long periods. Whereas here, I don't need to do that. I can just fast forward. So we can do this for like a stint and then we can fast forward time and we can sort of work on other things as well. We've got the silage to sort of keep us going. Um, and also then we're going to be able to start working on our cows. I've just got to decide where to put them. We'll eventually be wanting to get straw for the cows, but I'm not going to grow our own to begin with. We will buy in a bit of straw, and I do want to put straw in for them. I'm definitely going to want to put straw in for them, but I'm thinking buying the straw in is the option that we'll use to start with, because it's just going to be better for them. Um, it's going to be easier for us as well, like... We, we do want to have bedding for the animals, and I don't have the luxury of being able to just use some hay for them like that. Uh, I'm not... I'm sort of thinking that, you know, I kind of like the idea of saying that we can buy in straw that we can use for bedding, but if I want to be able to feed TMR, then... I have to grow my own straw to be able to do that. I think that would be an interesting little restriction just to add in there. And it's not going to hold us up. It just means that we can choose to feed hay or grass. I think with cows you can feed uh, like the mid-tier stuff is silage or hay. And then the, the low-tier stuff is grass. But also I'm not sure... The difference between feeding animals TMR, feeding the cows TMR, and feeding uh, just grass. So if someone could tell me in the comments section, is there much difference? 
if I go and feed just grass, do I have to feed a lot more of it? Do I increase the yield if I feed TMR? Because it used to be that you, in, you increase the yield by feeding the, the top range stuff. But it doesn't seem to work that way anymore because I've, like experimented with pigs and you got to feed the base ration of whatever the base ration is but as soon as I started feeding the base ration for the pigs that the rest of it seemed to be added extras and I'm not sure that it made any difference because the, the pigs were still saying that they were a hundred percent even though I wasn't feeding everything so I'm wondering if what it does is it just allows you to use less food over a period of time or what I, I i don't know so if anybody does know the answer to that one can you please let me know in the comments i'd really like to find out what the advantage of feeding tmr is now because it doesn't just on the face of it it doesn't seem to be a huge advantage i'm i look at the the numbers of it and i'm sort of thinking well why do i need to go and feed that the mineral feed going into the TMR, is that purely a role play thing or do you actually get a bonus of some kind by adding the minerals into the TMR? I couldn't see any advantage to feeding it over not feeding it. Um, I have lots of questions here about the numbers on these things. I'd really, really like some answers. So if anybody does know any of this information, please let me know. It would be absolutely wonderful. The mineral mixture that you can add to your TMR, is that a role play thing only or does it physically actually add a bonus to the performance of the cattle? Is it worth making TMR or should I just feed silage? Is there... the, the because, like, the total mixed ration, it used to give you a definite bonus. It was absolutely 100% worth doing it. But now I'm not so sure. I mean, if you look at the actual value of the food that you put in, if you feed silage um, and then versus TMR, you can put 30% of your um, food when you do the TMR... 30% of it can be straw. Now, straw sells for a lot less than silage does. So, just from that point of view, from a financial side, TMR is more profitable. But that's because you're spending less on actual feed value than you are on anything else. I'm not sure how much other difference it makes. Another thing for me to find out. So, if anybody knows... Please, I beg of you, get into the comment section and tell me all you know. Tell me the secrets. Spill your secrets, please. Right, I've got a section up here that we have now cut. It's night time anyway, so we're just going to stop there a second. I'm going to go and remove this tree, because that's a non-tree right there. Uh, a non-harvester tree. Technically, it's not, but um, I treat them as non-harvester trees. If I can take out that one, that one, that one, that's a pretty much a nice straight line going from the corner of the well, almost the corner of the field, like all the way up there. I've, I've got another big chunk that I can add to my field. That would work out quite nicely. I'd, I'd quite like to do that. So we'll we'll do that in a bit. Let's go and get some sleep. We haven't actually been home to sleep for quite a while. Let's try that. Just just for something different. Let's go home to sleep. And then, oh, there's the nighttime lights all coming on. It's quite beautifully lit up here now, isn't it? Look at that. And we've got our grotty little hole in the corner. We definitely need a better house. We are going to go for a big manor house. Alrighty then. Ten grand from property income. We are into April. The grass is technically long enough now. And for people that do do silage in real life, you'll be very well aware that... Um, let's go and have a look here. 
uh, you'll be very aware that it's quite possible to start doing silage in April. People have been doing silage around me in April, so it, it does happen. We can just leave that. We don't need to worry about it. And all of these are, well, those are 12,000 at 16, at 16. It looks like it's still doing that, supplying five of these bad boys with everything they need. All right. Three more trees I said I wanted to cut in here. So let's do these three trees, and then we can see about starting to gather everything up. So it was this one right here was tree number one. And we better do a little bit more plowing and stuff like that. So let's take you over here. Like that. Hmm. I... Not sure that you're going to want me to stick religiously to cutting down every single tree because this is going to take a long time if we have to do it this way. I mean, you may you may surprise me, and I'm looking down over there where those other trees are down that way, and actually there's not that much that we would want to be cutting. This here is extra field. Like uh, I spend a day or two through the winter cutting down the trees here, and I. Okay, I'm not really sure why that cut, then. That cut, but didn't cut. Yeah, that's better. Right, that did something a little bit weird there. Um... Yeah, there's a, there's a patch down over the other side. We may have to buy another piece of land between us and Field 17 down over there. But that would be... Actually, no, it's not between us and Field 17. Right, well, that was tree number two just there, and this is tree number three. Let me cut this one, and then I can move this thing out of the way, and we can see about removing, clearing up some of these stumps and everything. That one wants to go there. I'm also thinking that we want to be planting this now in April so that the... Will it grow in time if I plant it along... Actually, I think we can plant it alongside doing the stuff in May. We, we mow the other field and then we can plant this as well. I think we can do that without it causing us any problems. So I'm just going to bring you back in here out of the way over there, and I'm going to shut you down like that. Okay, so you can stay there. I'll do the stumps in a second. I want to just have a look down over here, because there's a bit more open space this way. If we go through these trees... No, see, it's not towards field 17. It's completely the opposite way. Well, not the opposite way, but come out through here. I've got small trees right there that I need to be cutting down. The, the, problem, the only issue is that we don't own it yet. It's heading out into land that we don't own, which is over here. So there is still a few trees that we've got to cut down here by the look of it. Um, those are right on the edge of that bit. I probably do want to remove them because if we have a look here, I've got that fence line and I don't think that fence line can be removed. The gate... I've got a gate there can't remove anything here and then there's also a gate over there so we can get in and out for the storage here and this is the storage this one here is storage not a cell point so let me jump in over here so there's a few bits there we can cut down some of these with the chainsaw and make room for the cows and we can kind of set up shop here but look at where i am over there right in the middle of this. I need to buy that. It's 182. We'll be able to do that in another couple of months' time when we get the furniture. So we could start coming out through this way and we could actually get our first cows set up here. And then we can sort of start moving back from there. That's, that's, I think this is a good idea. I think this is something that could work well. All of this up here, this would end up becoming more fields. So... I could quickly clear an area down there just using the chainsaw uh, so that we can put the cows in there. 
and then this bit up here I can stick to a little bit more sensibly. I've got a whole load of trees that, uh, well, there's a whole load of stumps here that we want to get rid of. Now, I do have a stump grinder down in the yard. So, do you want to bring it back that way? Um, the stump grinder back in the yard, technically, I ought to bring that one up here and do this with, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about that. And what we will do instead is, I'll say, well, because I've got the stump grinder, then I'm free to go and do this as well. So we get rid of that one, and then there. I love this. So much easier just doing it like this. This is absolutely brilliant. And I also like the fact that we get to do this with Jedi powers as well. The Jedi powers are very, very cool. There is a little tiny one right there, so I want to just take that one off. Like that. And there's a deciduous tree there. I'll leave that one for a minute. We'll end up cutting that one down later. It can stay there for now. It's had a reprieve. Temporary reprieve. I might get rid of the green light. It starts to get a bit annoying. Just flicking to it. I'd rather just have an on-off for this one. I know I can roll my mouse button in the opposite direction and it should work fine, but I always forget to roll it and then it irritates me that the... Um, green light has come on yet again and has done that. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's mostly just down to me doing this slightly wrong. If I bring you there like that, that's not going to remove the... No, it's not. I was wondering if it's going to remove the tree, like the, the, the branch there. I don't think you can do that. I can cut them in half there like that. I don't think I can actually cut them up and remove them once they've been chopped down. Let's see. Right. It's going. It's going. I've, I've, I've rolled through it the wrong direction. I know it's because I'm rolling through it in the wrong direction, but it still irritates me. So it's only 100. We can buy it back if we really want it. There. Now I can just scroll forwards with my mouse button every time, and it's either on or off. Much better. That's, that's much better. There, see? Rather than, you know, adapt and overcome and learn how to use the things properly, I just give up and go home. Well, I haven't gone home. I haven't given up. I'm still doing this. It's just I've decided to do it in a different way to how I would have otherwise. There's nothing wrong with that. Whatever works best. That's that's the, the, a good way to, to look at it. Whatever works best. Now, if I go over here, uh, I take that one out. We're near the end of the day. It's been raining an awful lot. It's a good job I'm a Jedi because I'm using my Jedi powers the whole the time I'm out here to shield myself from the rain. I have a, just a, a minor shield using the powers of my mind, and then I don't have to worry about the rain at all. So if I'm going to remove these logs, i got to go and drive all the way to the sawmill and get the log trailer that's down there and we've got to do something with that one so what have we got over here we've got more of these i'm actually going to sleep the night here and then we will pick up the oh, actually i don't know if i need to worry about no i don't think i do let's have a look furniture 1500 yeah okay i will go and pick that i'll sleep sleep the night sleep one night now because it's going to go into may and that means that we're going to be starting to do our mowing our first lot of silage uh we've got a little bit of plowing and planting to do and then we also want to clear up everything here as well so we've got like two and a half thousand fifteen hundred fifteen hundred and two and a half thousand. And then you over here. You're doing nicely. Distributing still. Looking at those, they've got 16. 14, 14, 16. I already said that. But yeah, that's working nicely as well. Right, it's still hoofing it down with rain. When does the rain change? Nine o'clock. Let's go to nine o'clock so that the rain stops. Eventually, 
I'm actually going to go to 10 o'clock. We'll go one more hour. Then we will gather up all of the... There we go. Right, we'll put that on the five minute speed. Five times speed. And we will gather up all of the furniture that we've now got available. So I'm going to go up around the top here to this one first. I suspect that we're going to need to carry all of this furniture back. Now, the reason that I don't want to do the furniture as something that I... There we go, that's the last one. I don't want to have the furniture as something that I go to... That I just have, like, delivered straight to a factory and brought up. is because I actually like going and gathering it up. It's, it's quite cool being able to go and just load up a lorry with all of this furniture here. And then ferry it back a load at a time. Because this is a huge amount of money. This is like 6,000 euros on here. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's go up here next to this one. It's not 6,000 euros. It's 6,000 per pallet. I love the way that it auto loads on this. That's actually full. 40 pallets is completely full on there so I can take this back to the main yard or I can drop it here but now I'm going to drop it here I'm going to unload the whole lot just there like that and then I can go and just empty out a couple more over here I can go and get oh there oh brought out an extra one so we've got six pallets right there and I can get that one there there'll be another one in just a second any second now there we go two actually and we'll take those and then I will come over here and I'll get one more and then in another well it's gonna be two months I would think so just pick that one up and then I'll stop that one from doing any loading. This needs a lot of work for decoration in here, doesn't it? And it's kind of why I want to get some cattle as well. Like then we can break it up rather than just doing timber and decorating um, and a little bit of silage. Like we're then breaking it up and we're feeding the animals and looking after them as well. I think that's just going to improve the overall quality of what we're doing around here. And we have a look in... No, I want to have a look up here. So silage, we don't need to worry about now. We're going to go and have a look quickly at the furniture. So we're on 6,100 in May. It will go up to about 6.5. I think we actually went to almost 7... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.